Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with a new one day build. <sighs> and it involves a tool. I am making a tool today. You might not have thought of it as a tool, but now that I've mentioned that it's a tool, you will always think of it that way. During the shelter in place, uh, my wife, Mrs. Don't Try This, has been spending a lot of time tending to uh, our succulent garden. We have a tiny little deck in our house. Um, it's a place of great relaxation for us, and it is surrounded by succulents. And in the tending to succulents, it turns out you don't want to just pour water over them. Uh, you actually want to put water right in their base. So you want a, a, a watering can that has a nice, precise spout that can get to the, uh, the base of the succulents. Now, her birthday is coming up. It may have already long passed by the time you see this video, but in this point in time, her birthday is about a week away. And so I thought I would make my wife a watering can for tending to our succulents. And I'm going to do it using some sheet brass and some engineering brass and all of my brass soldering, brazing, sanding, machining techniques will come into play during this build. And it's the kind of thing I've been excited about doing for a while. And I've just been trying to come up with the right project to execute a lot of brass construction. And this is it. So the first step is to come up with a design. And I have a nice big piece of unsullied corrugated cardboard to do some drawings on and uh, then we'll go from there. All right, I have basically uh, figured out the rough structure here. I've been looking at a lot of flower, uh, flower pots, sorry, not flower pots, watering cans. And this is a very basic design. Uh, you got a long spout with a curve that uh, is above the top water level of the can, so water won't leak out. A nice handle for being able to pour, and I may make that handle thicker at some point along its journey so that it's comfortable. A fill spout, which does not need to be covered. Uh, some support here for supporting the long spout. And I may actually make this spout out of many pieces of stepped engineering brass. Um, k &S Engineering Brass, which I have a full rack of, uh, telescopes. So each piece telescopes into its predecessor and uh, into its successor. So uh, I might try and get a really graceful curve. Now, this is a sort of a plan view, and, and sorry, an elevation view of what I'm thinking of. But I'm not positive this is what I, how I want the shape to go. I know I want the body of this to be oval, but... <sighs> Look, on a thing like this, order of operations is everything. And aesthetically, while this is close to what I want, it's not perfect. So I'm going to let the actual uh, uh, design, I'm gonna let the construction guide the design. The most difficult part of this build is this spout. So that's where I'm gonna begin. I'm gonna begin with the spout. And once I have that done, then I'm going to make the handle. And once I have those two things done, I'm gonna figure out a shape of a, a can that joins those two in holy matrimony. Um, so I think it's time to break out, bend, and deal with a whole bunch of brass tubing. Uh, normally in a sequence like this, uh, we'd have a shot in the beginning of the sequence of me pulling out the brass, but I forgot to get that. So. Actually, it's almost just as important to show me putting away the brass. I'm shooting, right? Yeah, I'm actually filming. Okay, so it's almost just as important to show me putting away the brass because uh, these KNS retail racks um, were, <laughs> for me, it was like finally growing up uh, to get these because this is, I always dreamed of having these in my shop. For 30 years, I've wanted to have such a thing in my shop. And when you have something like this, where each one is precise and placed in a specific location, and I know I've got some other detritus around here somewhere, it's really, really important that they all go back to the right place. Otherwise, why have organization? So, here we go. So here are ones I did not use. So I think that one is there.
Symphony. I have my spout. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Tapered. Uh, and all it is, all I did to do this was I slowly bent pieces of brass tubing and then cut out just the bend part using my portable bandsaw and then threaded them all together. So you can see the steps quite clearly here, but from here, it just looks like a nice, delicate flower, flower watering can spout. Um, I am super happy with that. So I'm laying that on my design here. Uh, and now you can see it's slightly different. It's longer and bigger than I had planned, which is fine. Now it's time to bend this part, the handle. Uh, and I have some solid brass rod for that. Uh, and that's what I'm gonna do next. Bending metal regularly into um, nice looking curves is not easy, but it's not that hard either. Um, it just takes a kind of a really steady attention to detail and a willingness to keep on going in and fixing what you've screwed up. Um, I mean, I remember one of the first jobs I took as a young maker was to make a, uh, a set of steel coat hangers for a bridal gown place in Hayes Valley. And, uh, oh man, I mean, I bent so much steel for that, but there's a way in which after you've bent a certain amount of it, being able to make a curve flow is really satisfying. And honestly, I'd gotten my training on things like coat hangers, right? Like just trying to get a nice gentle bend out of a coat hanger is the same thing as trying to get a gentle bend out of a piece of steel. So there's lots of places in which you can practice. So what I'm doing here is I'm kind of just applying the first curve and trying to make it really regular. I'm moving the rod about a half an inch each time I'm um, applying about the same amount of a bounce force and I'm kind of trying to keep the physicality just consistent enough because I wanna try and get a steady curve first. After I've got it steady, then I'll make it match the curve that I've drawn. Um, the other thing that I've done for strength is I've actually um, nested two tubes inside each other. And that means this is a much more rigid structure than it would be if it was just one layer of tubing. It's a nice end run around having to go find a thicker piece of tubing. Um, right now it's way too big for my flower pot, but I really like this curve and I've got enough to work with in here so that I think that I can start to, I can start to sharpen it in certain places and see if I can't get a curve that I like to be my, um, to be my Valentine. I, I mean, and in this, again, I'm not trying to match perfectly to the drawing. I'm trying to get something that's aesthetically interesting and then I will get the pot to match it once I'm, yeah. So again, I'm just moving it in small, small increments. Really, it's the accretion of many small actions as how to bend tubing or steel to the shape that you want. And for a good portion of the time you're doing it, it's gonna feel like you're doing it wrong. Yeah, see, like that's too sharp of a bend and that's kind of a mistake, but it might be one that I can work with because it comes out of the end of this. Yeah, see, I think I can, yeah, I just have to. All right, so at this point in the process, I tend to start to give myself some reference marks um, just so I kind of know where I am and then I know where I want a sharper bend. So, and again, keeping it level so your curve always happens on one plane. I mean, that's what's so great about a hospital bender, right? It keeps everything on the exact same plane. But this is now, all about just slowly moving through. There we go, that's nice. And now I'll go to here. And again, can't check too many times. It's just about slowly making it what you want it to be. And each time you see a part that you're like, oh, that bend could be a little more even. You can even it out by giving it a little goose in the middle. That's what you do. And when you have a overall curve, you grab both ends and kind of gentle it outwards. And I, the main thing I want to say about bending tubing is that while you're doing it, it's going to feel like you're doing it wrong. Right now, 
this is garbage. Like this is making me nuts, but I know I can get it where I want it to go. And also I've given myself some extra at the ends. Don't ever cut too close to, you need bending room. And there's this way in which you can get into this move, bend, move, bend, move, bend. And it's almost like a physical dance. And then you look up and you're like, ooh, that's really nice. And by the way, this is a nice marker that I'm staying on a very specific plane. I'm only about half the width of the brass off at this point. Um, that's great. That tells me I'm on the right track. Also having two nested tubes, is um, that's helping me maintain, uh, not buckle the brass. When you're bending thin tubing, it's always possible to buckle it. For instance, if you look very carefully along the line here, you can, I think you might be able to see that there are these little buckles and that's just, sometimes impossible to not end up with. It's just the more the more tiny bends you do, the less of those buckles you'll have. Things like brass tubing, sometimes it's impossible to avoid, but all right, we're gonna come in here. The way you get good at this is just practicing, you know? Um, I did so much of, almost all of my early metal work for hire was using quarter inch hot roll steel rod. And that stuff, Bends very easily. Uh, it was easy to fit in my car because I would just show up to the lumber yard with a bunch of bolt, with a pair of bolt cutters, and I cut it into the lengths that fit in my Volvo. And now I'm crossing over itself, which is fine. I just want to get the line right. I'll worry about turning it to size later, but I have a sharp bend here, and I want to get it right. Oh yeah, it's coming along nicely. Okay, so we're following up to here, and then I can start to come in a little sharper. And you get to know your bender and you get to know the material, the more you bend it. And it's just, again, it's practice. So my recommendation to get good at this is like, find some old pieces of steel rod and just start trying to get them in the shape that you want. Actually, again, coat hanger, just a coat hanger is fantastic practice. Uh, oh, oh, this is, this is nice. Okay, so yeah. It feels good too. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I'm going to overcut it here by an inch and I'm going to overcut it here by an inch. Um, right, you should see this. So here is my rough drawing. Uh, that's the body. That's the last part that I'm building. Here's the spout, which probably is gonna go like that. And then here's the handle I just bent. And I know this, yeah. So what I did was this mark right here was my reference mark for the side of the vessel. And then I can actually make this handle a little bigger or smaller as I want. Um, but first up, I'm gonna cut it here. I'm gonna cut it here. That gives me a little more ability to see because these two pieces, uh, they're just now getting in my way and it's time to cut them off. Now I've got my curve, I've got the handle here and I like it, but it has a little bit of um, unevenness here on the outside. And I wanna try and just make that a little more regular. I, I want an aesthetic feeling out of that that I'm not quite getting. So I'm gonna use my anvil and a chasing hammer here, kind of do a little bit of, uh, of refinement on this curve. pretty happy. I was able to use a, uh, a sand, uh, uh, a nice fine sanding belt to, well, let's see. I used the hammer to, to, to even out the highs and lows. Then I used the uh, Scotch-Brite uh, belt and the sanding belt to further even those out. And because I have two layers of brass, because I have a nice thick brass wall there, I was able to actually make this entirely smooth all the way around. Now I'm gonna do some more work on this with some sandpaper because the mark of great 
Mark of craftsmanship sometimes is the lack of witness marks. Sometimes it's the visibility of witness marks, but for me right now, I wanna take away some of those. the handle, which I've removed most of the marks from, and I've got the spout, which still has to be silver soldered together. Uh, next up is to start fleshing out the body of this thing. And for that, I've got some, uh, I think this is 020 or 030 uh, brass sheet. And I'm going to, um, yeah. I think I'm gonna cut some strips that are about as wide as my as my drawing is tall here, because I think that's about the size I'm looking for. And the next step is to cut out a long set of strip and maybe even uh, silver solder the two strips together so I can get a full round. I wish I had a longer piece of brass, but I do not. It's 12 inches square is what I got, so I, I gotta make that work. I have the brass that will be the body of my watering can laid out here, one sheet over the other. And I have some one, two, three blocks weighing it down. I've put a straight edge across so I know that I'm making a part that is aligned with itself. <clears throat> and I'm going to be using Stay Clean Silver Solder to put this all together. Um, Jamie taught me about this stuff years ago. It's just really, really uh, robust. It's a lovely, lovely product. It's one of my favorites. There we go. Yeah, I gotta lead it, that's it. And again, I'm also, you know, I'm bending this without a roller and I'm kind of doing it using the same philosophy I am with the with the strip, sorry, with the rod, which is I'm just slowly making bends and seeing how they're how they're working, and I'm slowly kind of dialing it into what I like. have here are the rudiments of a watering can, right? Right? And then on the other side, right? Oh! <laughs> ding, 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 This makes me so freaking happy. I've so wanted to make one of these things for so forever. Whew. Okay. Can you tell that I'm excited? Um, I now have the body of my of my watering can and it is soldered together and it doesn't look like crap. So, I'm so far pleased. Next is to do, let's see here. Next is to do the top and the, well, next is to kind of adjust this until I really like it uh, and then clean it all out, make sure it's really nice and clean from all the goop and gunk and everything and to make sure that I believe that it is totally watertight, which I believe it is. 
Then I'm going to put a top and a bottom on it. Now the bottom is going to be thicker material. Um, and I think I'm also going to run a border around both sides. Yeah, I think that's that's something that I want to do here. I just think it'll look really nice if I do. After I get the top and bottom on, then I'm going to go in and do the, uh, the spout. I have, uh, I have silver soldered the bottom on with a border. It seems to have filled in quite nicely. I'm quite pleased. Best of all, it is holding water. Yes, it is holding water. So that's the biggest deal. This is the bottom. Um, what I'm now gonna do is on the band saw, I'm gonna trim this down all the way around and then finish it on the belt sander, do a little bit of uh, final work and we should be able to bring this puppy home. Yeah, um, it's going really, Provisionally well. make some good sounds. proceeding apace. We have a body. We have a bottom. We have a border. All of this is going quite well. It's now time for me to silver solder the spout. To silver solder the spout. Yeah, because uh, the next thing is to put the spout in. And I want to have access to the inside to put the spout in. That's important to me. Oh, that's <laughs> This is my spout. <laughs> I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Over there is my handle. This is the spout. Now you can see I've got some um, some artifacts of the soldering here. Uh, I will take care of those. I've also got some bumps I want to take care of, but I can't go too far. So I'm going to use my um, belt sander here to kind of bring it home.
the spout is going to go here. And yeah, I kind of want to do the spout before I put the top on. That's the front. Yep, that's the front. And the spout's got to be higher than the, yeah, than the water level. And then I'm also going to put in a support, but the spout's going to go right there and it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be right. There's only one bit that can drill the hole that I need in here right now. And that's this. This is a step drill. And instead of a normal twist drill, which pulls itself into the material, the step drill scrapes the material out of the way. It's perfect for flat materials like flat acrylic, flat metal, flat plastic. Yeah, step drills, get the a set of step drills and life will be good. I'm also working with a step drill that is this that's biggest dimension is exactly the dimension of my fattest pipe, which is great. I am going to start straight in, but then I'm going to angle it so it fits the pipe. And I believe if I come in here right like this, I'm through. Now the trick is to angle this because I want this to be comme ça, like this. So it's a fairly steep angle. So I'm gonna come in. Oh yeah. Need a batter step drill. It's actually, uh, these are actually three pieces of a set from Irwin. Um, full disclosure, they sent me this set. I'm liking it a lot. It's totally great. Yeah, this high end. Yeah, still got some ways to go. Ladies and germs. Yep. Okay. So uh, now I want to extend this up this way, and that is a job for a Dremel or a handheld rotary tool, as it were. Looking good. I, I like that join. I like how that join looks. Around the outside, there we go. So it's that. It's time for soldering in the, uh, the spout. And again, making sure that it is leak proof. Um, so I'm gonna be putting it over here. And over here, I'm gonna have a, a stand of some one, two, three blocks that will hold up the spout. Yeah, and I'll have one in here. There we go. Yeah, this is great. This is the tricky part. I gotta heat it on the outside and get the solder on the inside. And I gotta get it all the way around cause I need a seal.
I might have gotten it. Holy cow. That? Okay. I might have actually achieved what I was trying to do. I have successfully added a top border. Um, I did that by uh, taking this thin piece of brass, uh, clamping it so that it was exactly the size of the main body of my watering can, and then soldering it and then pressuring the ring over the top of this. Sorry, I did this off camera. I had a visitor and I forgot the camera wasn't running. Uh, occasionally that happens. But I now have soldered the inner lip of this upper piece all the way around. And uh, the next thing I'm gonna do about the body work is solder that on top of that and then trim it back. But first, I have to do some work on how the handle attaches to all this stuff. Yeah, that's the next deal is the handle. Yeah. So first things first on the handle front, well, I'm gonna cool this down in the sink and then I'm gonna drill a hole for the handle and put it in. Uh, and once that's in and roughly and fuck, you know, I, I have to get this on and I'm gonna have a fill ring that I'm gonna make for this. And I have an idea about that too. making progress. Uh, I have the body with the bottom ring and the top ring. It's all waterproofed. I've got the spout. It's a good join. The handle back is joined. Now the top of the handle is floating and that will of course get addressed when I put the top on, but I need to make the fill hole for the, look at how nice that glows inside. Ooh, it's very high. Um, now it's time for me to cut a nice big fat hole out of the brass. How am I gonna do that? That is a great question. I'm gonna start by double stick taping it to this big piece of one inch plywood, and then I'm gonna use this big hole saw uh, nice and slow, and hopefully that will get me where I wanna go. Um, cutting big holes in thin sheet material, always a thing, always a dealy bob. Um, but uh, I have grown to really like the double stick tape over the last few weeks. Yeah, COVID has taught me how great double stick tape is for securing things while you are working on them. That actually worked out better than I thought it would. Uh, that came out just gorgeously. And it was, I probably, I had the spindle turning a little too fast, but it went whoop, and just like cut it. And now I have this nice circle of brass, which will go into the brass drawer. Um, I thought I was gonna turn on the lathe, a little border around this, but I don't have any brass stock that's like two and a half inches wide. So I'm going to bend this to be that, yeah. We're gonna do a little more bending. All right, so there was something that happened. Uh, as I was attempting to solder the ring into what will be the top of my watering can, I got it almost perfect. And then if you watch the time lapse at this very moment, I heated up so much the metal buckles and the ring pops out, losing the work that I had just done. So uh, I had to take the ring, clean off the solder, clean out the inside of the hole and redo it. Um, 
Yeah, this is good ticklish work. It, 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 you gotta, what you'll notice on this whole build is that every single step I'm taking, I'm kind of creeping up on. I'm not going whole hog. I'm not trying to do too much at once. And that's something I've learned about brass construction like this is that you've really got to go slow. Yeah, you got to kind of, order of operation is slow. Um, but this is, looks really good. I'm going to do some sanding and finishing on the top of this and then figure out where the hole for this guy goes. And then, hell's bells, Margaret. We'll have the main body pretty much done. What? great. Yeah, I've got it. I, it's not going to stay square. I'm going to cut it out and then I'm going to sand it down so it all looks like I knew what I was doing. This is shaping up quite nicely. I got to get a little bit of uh, solder in there in that action. And it's time to clean this puppy up. Still a ways to go, but yeah, I'm really getting pleased. Nice. Oh, almost, almost. Come on. That's it. Yep. Ah. figure out where I want to sign this. I don't want to do any etching on it. Not that I'm weirdly clear about, but I do want to figure out how to sign it. Lots of elbow grease later. I have something that looks for all the world like a real object. Uh, this looks like a genuine watering can, which it is. Uh, but now the question is, this is the basic form. I kind of want to personalize it. And so I'm thinking about maybe spelling my wife's name here, but maybe that's a little bit like, maybe she doesn't want to water the can, like, oh, I'm looking at my name while I'm watering my plants, look at my name. <laughs> maybe that's lame. Um, maybe I just make a little banner here that says, happy birthday. Maybe that's what I do, and then I'll sign it on the bottom here.
it, um, I will say, I've been looking for a project to make out of brass for a long time. And that this began this morning as some K&S engineering brass and some flat sheets of brass. And uh, eight hours later, I've got something like this. Um, it's pretty cool. I'm pretty freaking psyched. Um, and still a little ways to go, but I am a, uh, yeah, I really like it. up with the proper personalization here. It's going to go right there. Yep. See that? Nice and tasteful. It's not like crowing about itself. Happy birthday, it says. Happy birthday. A little bit hand-hewn. Makes me very happy. So I'm going to get some uh, solder under there and some flux on there and heat it up and let it wick in. Here we go. What just happened there? Well, the fact is, I thought I was done and I was starting to polish it and I filled it full of water and I had a leak. So I took care of that leak, then I had another leak, then I took care of that leak, then I had another leak and I've spent the last two hours chasing leaks and I finally just ran a little B to JB weld on the underside of the top because uh, I didn't have enough uh, surface to edge to edge contact. That, that was an issue. However, it should be plenty strong given the way I've got it currently set up. Uh, and I'm gonna let it sit overnight and I'm gonna come back in tomorrow and fix it. You can see how sweaty I am. That was, that was a lot of work. Um, when I'm going through stuff like this, when I'm chasing leaks and I think I'm done, but I'm not quite done. I've been doing this long enough that I don't get really bent out of shape about it, but it's not fun. It's, it's boring, it's exhausting, it's concerning. But this is the moment at which you got to just sort of knuckle under and kind of keep on tackling it. Find a leak, chase it, get rid of it. Find another leak, chase it, get rid of it. Find another leak, just keep on doing that. Eventually, you're done. Hopefully, tomorrow morning, I'll be done. Well, two hours of chasing leaks later, I think the main bulk of my watering can is done. Structurally, it's totally sound. You can hear that, there's no more rattling. Uh, you know, my biggest problem was not enough edge to edge contact here. Uh, I was using brass that was too thin, so I supported it with JB Weld. It may fail in the future. If it does, I will wrap this around here and do another sol uh, solder joint to uh, strengthen that joint. But for right now, I think it's actually pretty robust. Next, I would like to make it easier to hold, so I'm going to look into doing some leather wrapping around the handle here. I have a nice long piece of leather here, 
Yeah, that's a good six feet long. I think I can get a nice wrap lace out of it that's like half an inch wide, but I got to straighten it out a little bit first. So just a little bit of surgery on this hide. And it's a nice veg tan hide, so it'll take whatever color I apply to it really well. Half inch. Making a better leather strap cutter that's definitely a one-day build I want to do. I have I have issues with all of them. Okay, so let's see here. Let's make a little slice to begin with. Yep, that is the sharp edge. All right, here we go. Now I may need more leather than this, but let's just see. Let's just see what I can achieve here and just see what it feels like. I may need to do a thicker strand, you know. There's all sorts of questions here. And hopefully I'll be able to get a fair bit around this bend. I don't want to have to sew two pieces of leather together or glue them together. I'd rather not, but I will if I have to. I like how this is looking. I may add some glue to the underside to make this a much more positive join, but as it stands, you know what I also might do is make a thicker lace. I certainly have the leather to go a little bit wider, but I can't make it longer. So if I'm overlapping to the same degree every time, I think it's going to continue to be the same length. But again, let's see how far we get. I'm getting excited, so I'm getting sloppy, but... I had no idea it would reach around this far. Usually when you're wrapping something, you lose so much length in the multiplication of pi. <laughs> yeah. But this is wrapping quite nicely. And to be honest, I think it's going to be perfect as a length. Um, I think what I'm going to do is... Yeah, we're going to carry it all the way to the bottom of the leather lace. There we are. Okay, so there's that. And I can... that right there, that feels great. That feels really, really lovely. I really happy with this. Uh, I have learned a lot and I want to say, you know, there's times in this video when I was talking about like soldering brass together, you want to get this, you don't want to get that. Um, and I was thinking, you have no right to pretend to be an authority on this. You're just figuring it out as you go. And this is true. I have both done a lot of brass manufacturing using silver solder and there's still crap tons. I am learning on the fly. Like, you're going to have a structural join like the top of this. You really need to make sure it's supported with some surface area. And I didn't have enough surface area. And that's kind of one of the reasons I ended up chasing leaks on this thing, because uh, the, the silver solder is not mechanically strong enough uh, under certain circumstances uh, using very thin brass. And again, it's just like, Every material has its own rules and its own proclivities, and you have to both work with them and work around uh, all of those rules and proclivities. So after all of that, after chasing leaks for a couple of hours and letting this thing sit overnight, I, I feel like it is a done deal. I'm really pleased. Um, I thought I shot a time lapse of me installing this, but apparently I hadn't pushed record. But I ended up supporting the front 
So the, the back end of my leather handle is glued there with barge glue, and that's a nice looking beginning to that seam. And then when I came all the way around here, this is the part that would receive kind of the most abuse. In addition to gluing it, I wrapped some fine brass wire I had around the end of that and secured it underneath with a little drop of crazy glue. And it is, um, you can hear it. It's monolithic. There's no like rattling, there's no, you know, some sort of, yeah, that would tell you. So uh, it is complete and finished and ready to wrap and give to my partner, uh, save for the dedication. Yeah, that's gonna, I'm going to inscribe it right now. What did I write? Well, that's between me and my wife. Thank you very much for joining me for this one day build. I am super happy with it. I feel really, I feel like it's an achievement. I feel like it's a, a step up for me in my, my working with brass and my making of tools. Thank you guys for joining me on this and I will see you next time. Hey everyone, Adam Savage here in my cave. And we are living through a completely strange moment in time. Six months ago, the entire world changed. Everyone went into lockdown and so did Tested. We became a virtual workplace almost overnight. And now I see all my colleagues almost exclusively on video chat. Um, I am shooting only on the phone. I know the sound quality has gotten worse. Norm, Joey, and Gunther are all editing from home. And maybe the biggest change is output. We have radically increased the number of videos that we make because, well, that's what I'm doing all week long here is just shooting everything on my phone. And eventually the world will return to normal, but one of the things we wanna keep up is the pace of videos that we've been releasing. We've been ecstatic about your feedback about this and we wanna keep it going, but in order to, we need to ask for your direct support. And so I'm here today to announce Tested Channel Membership. If you're not interested in becoming a member, that's fine. Tested is not going to change for you. You still get all the same great one day builds, tool tips, the podcast, etc. But if you are willing to join, we've got some pretty cool extras and two levels at which to join. For $1.99 a month, we have our supporter level. And for $9.99 a month, our patron level, which includes all the stuff from the supporter level and some live streams, some direct access to me and the Tested team, and some sneak peeks into our entire Tested workflow and process. We are so excited about the new possibilities that channel membership opens up. And we know that many of you have been supporting us all along as Tested Premium members. And to you, I say thank you. Your support has meant everything. And you can keep it going by hitting our brand new join button somewhere on this screen. Thank you guys for watching. And between you and me, I am most excited by the live streams. I really loved doing those earlier this summer and I can't wait to pick it up again. Thank <laughs> you.